the tolerance to mint's meaning his breath still smells after a mint or no, what? No, I think it just doesn't affect him. When you say, oh, it's a really strong mint, he's like, I can never tell. I, like, damage the... Affect in, like, the sense of, like... Ta- like, they're like not strong to him anymore. When you then, you can't yeah. feel the... Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> he's built a tolerance. I think that's a problem. We, um, this is a, a dad, a dad stat, but um, one of my wife's friends turned me on to an NPR podcast which focuses on kid science. And it's like making science accessible for kids. And one of the things that they talked about was how your saliva um, actually changes over time. And mm. it changes the way you taste food. So like the whole theory around like, just keep giving kids broccoli or keep giving them yeah. know, vegetables and eventually they'll like it. Yeah. Apparently there's some science to that. Interesting. That if you, uh, you taste things differently yeah. after a while. So I bet Jake <laughs> is well. evidence of that on mints. Yeah, maybe he'll stop liking Fig Newton so we can get them back in the office. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it works the reverse. If you eat a lot, yeah. you stop liking it eventually. What's going on, everybody? We're back with, I think, our second to last episode of This Week in Notarize. Bittersweet. But we have a special guest today, Adam. Why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do at Notarize? Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Adam Pace. I'm the co-founder and chief strategy officer of Notarize. Um, I've done just about everything at the company since its inception. Uh, was the COO for the first three or four years, so set up our operations and our sales and uh, helped sort of open up the market with our regulatory push in the States. Uh, and these days I'm really focused on our strategic partnerships, uh, new markets that we're entering into, uh, making sure we have the right strategy to be able to open up things like the real estate market mm-hmm. and, and uh, build the right partners to, to really accelerate revenue. Awesome. And, uh, you know, and making sure the company's funded and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> the important things. Yeah. Um, well, by the time people are watching this, we will have announced our partnership with Ellie Mae. Max, Ellie Mae partnership, image. Um, integration with Encompass by Ellie Mae. So two things. Who is Ellie Mae? And why is our integration and partnership with them so important? So this is one of the most exciting partnerships we could have in the real estate industry. So Ellie is the largest, what's called LOS, or Loan Origination Software System. It's basically the system of record that lenders use to be able to manufacture loans, to make loans to borrowers. And for us, it's a bit, well, actually about 40% of all loans are originated on the Ellie Mae platform. And I've heard numbers like 65% of all logos or lenders themselves are on the platform. So for us, it really helps us to be able to onboard and scale our lenders faster so every lender can get started with us already with a technology integration in place. It can automate key parts of the closing and the transaction to make it much faster and smoother for their borrowers and for their teams. And obviously it makes it easier for us to onboard new lenders and and to go out and do outreach to new lenders who are on the LA system. So really a big win for us on the lender side of the equation. Mm. And so what does the integration allow us to do, like, technically? Yeah, so technically, basically, there's a number of data points that are needed to be able to create a closing on Notarize. Things, information about the borrowers, um, how you set up the transaction, whether it's a purchase or whether it's a seller side transaction. Um, How do you know whether a remote online closing is available versus some other type of closing? So all of those things can now be automatically provided to us and generated, in addition to obviously sending the document package over to Notarize as part of this integration. And then at the end, um, all the documents and the completed documents go immediately back into the lender system. So they can actually work from their existing system, their system that they're used to working with. They don't have to jump out of that and come into Notarize. They're able to start the entire process from Ellie Mae mm-hmm. and then finish it from Ellie Mae. So that makes it much easier on the lenders' teams as yeah. well. So faster for lenders, more efficient for lenders, a better borrower experience, which is obviously something we care a lot about, and um, kind of the realization of a true digital mortgage experience, I would say. Yeah, completely. So. I mean, now you can do it from application through closing. Yeah. The dream. The dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got back from Rewired. Yeah. Uh, kind of amazing, actually. Yeah. I mean, just to reflect, uh, for me personally, it was kind of a surreal experience because four years ago, we were out there just trying to convince people that this was legal yeah. and that this was actually something that would be beneficial to them and their borrowers and their clients. And to see the kind of uh, demand that exists now from title agents, from lenders, even people like you know Fannie Mae and Ginny Mae who were at the conference, it's kind of incredible. I mean, we, we just um, saw... Uh, this past week that there was a survey from Alta that 80% of title agents now either have done a digital closing or want to be able to do a digital closing, which is just, you yeah. know, if you did that three or four years ago, you would have seen probably the exact opposite. They would yeah. say they were afraid of it or didn't want it or didn't think it was legal. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, you also see now, uh, the first quarter of this year, there were more e-notes executed 
than all of last year combined, which yeah. is kind of crazy. So there's just this sense of momentum now in the industry that it's um, kind of you know moving it faster than even we anticipated. Yeah, so. it's awesome. I mean, yeah. Rewired is great. Max, if you could put some social of how great the conference was, I'm sure there's some photos of Adam and I somewhere in there. We can, we can make that work. Um, but what's crazy to me is even in just a little over the year that I've been here, um, going from like essentially paying to be at these places to advocate f advocate for what we do and who we are to saying we're going to essentially try to host one of these conferences ourselves for the first time and see who shows up and to be able to see more than 300 people from almost 200 unique companies with the speaker lineup that we had uh, it's just pretty crazy yeah it still doesn't really feel real yeah um, I mean it's kind of humbling the partners that we now have with folks like you know Guaranteed Rate and Thrive and Redfin and others who have Open Door who are there. I mean, again, you kind of have to pinch yourself to sort of say this is real. You almost you you feel exposed when you host a conference like yeah. that, but then to see all those partners come and the excitement and everybody sort of feeling like this is the future of real estate yeah. was was really really great. And I think it was fun for our team and hopefully it was fun for everybody that attended. Yeah, we've talked a lot about distribution. I think for us as a company, obviously. Dropbox announcement, even working with Guaranteed Rate and working with their title companies and just getting more exposure to all the key players in the ecosystem, the better we can facilitate a great online closing with everybody involved, the more that that just kind of facilitates adoption across all of the players who experienced us once. If you were involved in a closing with us once and it went great, you want to do it yourself and you right. want to tell people about it. And um, I just think that like this year, we've seen this huge adoption curve of what we do and uh, the conference obviously was a culmination of that and as we're going into 2020 I think we're really well positioned to be the player. Yeah, well, there's yeah. there's definitely this sense of network effects within the real estate industry. It exists, obviously, for a lot of different industries, but in real estate in particular, all of these partners work together on transactions, and when they have a good experience, then they're going to tell their partners about it. And so, um, you know, we're kind of, we have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to great partners today, and so it's a bit of, you know, pressure on us, I guess, to some extent to make sure that we deliver, but I think, uh, you know, we're up for it, and I think it's kind of the right timing. So. Yeah. To move an industry like real estate or anything in heavily regulated vertical, like financial services or healthcare or anything it does take collective action more mm -hmm. than anything and you know starting out we were a small startup right um, we really needed to punch above our weight and the way we did that was really by working with some really innovative and forward-thinking partners like people like Lennar one of the largest home builders in the country and Realogy on the real estate brokerage side or some of our large lender partners or title insurers like Westcorp and others and they have a massive megaphone right and we were just lucky to align ourselves with partners who were willing to sort of take a stand on this and knew that the future was coming and they wanted to be part of that to help us usher that in so they really helped us early on get further than we could have gotten on our own but over time you know uh, the proof is in the pudding right like they can only be advocates insofar as you're actually helping their business and so now what we've had to do is really start to execute and make sure that we can actually show them that hey by virtue of using notarize all the things we promise you are gonna come true right you're gonna have faster closings your customers are gonna remember you and they're gonna like it more and ultimately money is gonna move faster by virtue of this process as well so you know you know, this, so they don't have egg on their face at the end. And yeah. so that's a lot of pressure on us, but that's really what it takes to move this. Um, and now we have to do less of the work ourselves, right? In the beginning, we had to educate everyone. Now, um, a lot of these, the industry groups, um, trade associations and the companies themselves, they understand this process. They're out there explaining it to their own networks themselves. And hopefully we've been, you know, a good partner in helping educate them. Yeah. Max, you know when like an episode ends and you're just like feeling really good about stuff? Yeah. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> I feel great too, Ryan. I feel really good. Well, Adam, <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. You bet. And uh, we'll see you guys one more time. We have one more episode planned before the end of season one. And uh, yeah. I wanted to be the last one. This is not the last. Well, you're the last interview, <laughs> but we have a surprise guest. Max, get in here. All right. So, last episode, Max is going to be on. The man behind the camera. And we're going to talk about our favorite moments from season one. So you are the last guest to talk about. He is like the last last technically, but you are the last guest. No, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the, the highlight reel with Max. That's yeah. going to be great. <laughs> First episode. Yeah. Got to do my makeup. Got to shave. <laughs> awesome. See you guys next time. <laughs>